Hi, this is Jip. Um, for this video, we'll be talking about how to set up the development environment so that you can start contributing towards making the game PBR ready, where PBR stands for physics-based rendering, which is a different approach to shading units uh, and interpreting the light computations uh, so that the game in general will start to look better. Uh, now, there has been a lot of uh, feedback from people that would like to uh, contribute and I noticed that the background of people uh, does not include Git or GitHub. So we're going to take a more simplified approach so that you do not need to learn Git or GitHub to start contributing, but that you can see the changes in game and work the way you want to work with your workflow so that you can verify the results. Now, in this particular video, we'll be talking about how to set up that development environment. In other videos, we'll be talking about uh, where you can find what needs to be done, uh, where you can find the instructions, how that needs to be done, and what the progress is in general. So let's get started on discussing how to do the setup for the development environment. So we'll be navigating towards the repository of Forge Alliance Forever. This is where all the files are, including code, textures, meshes, that we changed at Forge Alliance Forever and that we're shipping to the user. Uh, which means that the textures and the meshes that we'll be changing to make the game PBR ready will at some point need to be added to the repository. Now, to make this simpler, um, you navigate to this button here, which allows you to choose the branch. And the branch is essentially a separate line of changes that get merged in later on. And you search for features slash PBR dash setup. You click on that. Now, just to confirm, it should state here feature slash PBR dash setup. And if you hover over it, you can see the complete branch name. Make sure that that's correct because otherwise you will not be working with the correct shaders and everything you do will need to be redone. So make sure that you're on this particular branch. Now, once you're on the branch and you verified that, um, you can click on this green button and then you can download the zip file. And the zip file has the same name as the branch that you downloaded it from. So this is again a check for yourself. Did I get the correct information? So if this states fa-feature-pbr-setup.zip, then you have the latest version, right? You have the correct version and the correct branch so that you can view the changes that you're making with the correct shaders. Now, this is going to take a bit especially because this particular branch is quite large because we introduced all the textures of the base game. So let's pause the video real quick and pick it up where we left it. All right, so the download is finished. Let's navigate to the download. Again, make sure to do this sanity check that it says fa-feature-pbr-setup.zip. If you do not have this, watch the video back from the beginning again and make sure that it, that you got the correct branch. Um, we're just going to navigate to uh, documents, make a new folder called fav-development, and we put the zip file in here. Then you just extract the zip file using extract here. And this is again going to take a while because there's a lot of information to extract. Let's, uh, it's actually going reasonably fast. Got to give it. Well, that wasn't too bad. Now, this is what we saw here, but then on your local file system. So now the game could technically already start using it. Um, we still need to tell the game where these files are though. Uh, one minor note, make sure that you're not in, oops, don't make shortcut. Make sure that you're not in some kind of 
uh, Dropbox sync folder or iCloud sync folder or any other type of automating syncing folder, make sure that it's just on your system and that no nothing else touches those files but the game and you when you work on textures so that there's no interfering with multiple applications trying to process these files. All right. Now, when we navigate to the repository, there is instructions on how to set up the repository. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'll just walk through this for whatever bits we need. So we'll be skipping some of it. Um, starting with this top bit, because that's what we're most interested in, running the game with your changes. Uh, we forked between quotation mark the repository. Um, we have it on our system right now. So now we need to copy the contents of repository slash setup slash bin into the bin folder. And what m what's relevant here is that we copy it into the bin folder of FAF and not into the bin folder of the Steam version of Forge Alliance. So we navigate to C, then we go into program data. This is a hidden folder. So if you can't see that, you can manually type it in just like that. And then inside here, there's a folder called FA Forever. And here is the bin folder that we're referring to. Now, if you installed FAF in a different location, when you set up, you know, during installation of, of, of uh, the client, this folder may be slightly different, uh, but then you know where it is. By default, it should be here, and you should be able to just copy this into your browser like that, and then you're at the correct place. So what do we need to do? We copy the contents of your repository. So let's navigate back to our repository. That's the files that we just downloaded so that's inside faf development there we go fa feature dash pbr dash setup and then we will need to have let's go back the contents of slash setup slash bin into the bin folder so let's do that uh, we have setup slash bin there you go so we're going to copy this now I already have this set up, so I'm just gonna rename this real quick to backup. There we go, yep. And we're gonna copy this in, and there we have it. Then we need to make a, a, a small change to the top of the file to indicate where the repository is so that the game loads in those assets accordingly. Uh, so let's do that, we're gonna open up the init underscore dev.lua file. We're gonna, for the sake of argument, I'll just open it with a notepad. There you go. And here at the top, we can say, change this to location of repository on your disk. Note that a backslash is used for escaping characters and you can just use a forward slash in your path and stats. So let's do that. So this is the place where we want to what we want to reference so let's copy this in and if we keep these as backslashes it's going to escape characters which is something completely different and it's going to mess up our path so we're just going to re replace all of these with forward slashes there we go and then we're gonna save it now this path is going to be different on your system, uh, but just make sure that you're in the root folder. So not in here, but that you're referencing this and that all these files, and you can just copy the path right here at the top and then replace them to forward slashes. And now all you need to do, if I'm correct, is run the game using this bat file and as with all bad files, it's important to look at what the bad file is doing. So let's do that real quick. We launch the executable. We tell them to look where the initialization is, which is the file we just copied in. We enable disk watch. 
which means that it will actively track for changes on disk, which is what we want because we want the game to reload the texture as we make changes to it. We show the log if anything is wrong. We write the log to a special location, which is dev.log, so that if anything happens to break for some reason, then you can share this file right here and we'll know what happened. Uh, don't think we need this one. Don't think this one's compatible anymore. Or that works anymore. Uh, and we disable the movie. And that's it. There's nothing else happening here. So let's do that. Let's run the bad file. All right, that's it. So we can see the log here. Note that the log uh, can also be behind the application if you're running full screen. Uh, I would highly recommend you to uh, work on this in windowed mode because uh, the game is a lot more friendly to you when you are in windowed mode. We can see the shaders compiled, that's great. Um, and if we start the game now and we choose a map that is compatible with the PBR shaders. Uh, in this case, that is Mellow Shallows. That's one of the maps. Another one is Salt War Colony 8 players. Uh, so we'll just go with this one. And make sure to download these maps from the vault in the client. Other maps are not compatible because they uh, we rely on the reflection map, on changes to the reflection map and not we have not yet done all of the reflection maps. So if you, if the units look really weird in game, it likely means that you have the wrong map because the map, the reflection map that the map uses is not updated for PBR yet. Um, but if you go here to maps, then we can either search for salt rock. There we have it, the A player version, and you can click the blue button, to download it. Or for example, mellow shallows which is this map right here. Make sure to restart the game if you don't have the maps yet. Otherwise it doesn't register. And now let's start, launch the game, see what happens. There we have it. So let's spawn in a Maver. Uh, you can do this using Alt F5 or if that doesn't work for you, you need to have shows a dialogue uh, that allows you to create units. That's the one you need. And that is by default set to Alt plus F2. Um, but now I'm pretty sure that this is correct because the Maver looks quite a bit different. Let's spawn in the Duke. The Duke looks quite a bit darker than the average. And then we can spawn in the UEF Land Factory, this one, which we already tackled. This one looks really crisp. And this one we did not yet tackle. That one looks a bit bumpy. Doesn't look that good as the other one. So that's it. That means that we now have the correct version. Just to make sure that we uh, that changes are recorded, let's say that we navigate to some Lua file. It doesn't particularly matter which one. So let's go for, um, let's go, it doesn't matter which one, but I have to think about which one I'm gonna pick. Um, one that doesn't break. Let's go for Alien Projectiles open it up in notepad and now if you make a change to this it should state in game that it got changed there we go you see it got changed so that means that everything we do in here in this uh, set of folders is going to impact uh, what we're going to be seeing here now, that's it for this video on how to uh, set up the development environment. In the next few videos, we'll be talking about some of the surrounding work and we'll give you a few gotchas that you can help 
to uh, to uh, significantly improve your workflow. Um, yeah.